Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. Look at this. What is this on either side of this walkway? Is this the Hopakong with eyes of flame? Is it coming whippany through the Englewood and Garfield as it came? No. This is some flame created by Wells Knight. Somehow, he set these iron blocks aflame, and they stayed aflame. It's magic. You know. Okay, I came out of this portal, and I thought to myself... Okay, I'm gonna go through this stone area, and then I'm gonna go through this, like, pool, and then I'm gonna get some ender pearls. Ah! Okay, never mind, never mind. Uh, maybe I should just go through the pool. Okay, well, core concept, I came through the portal, and I was shocked, shocked to learn there was flame burning in there. It was amazing, and I just wanted to say, you know, to Wells Knight, my hat is off to you, sir. That is an exceptional place to fill with fire. Five out of five stars on... What's the Minecraft equivalent of Yelp? Let's work backwards. What sounds like Yelp, but starts with a different consonant? In English, we traditionally call those rhymes. So, belp, kelp, delp, uh, gelp, help, melp, nelp, eh. None of these are really good. Okay, so whatever the YouTube Minecraft Yelp thing is... Wells Knight gets a lot of stores in. Anyway, I really only came here because I needed a ton of ender pearls. Boom. Got a ton of ender pearls. Should I do anything else while I'm here? You know what I do? I am level 36. Do I have literally anything that needs enchanting? Anything at all? No. Should I fix my Mendon pick? And my Elytra? Yeah, let's do that real quick. Time skip! We have the ender pearls we need now. But why do we need them? Do we need them so that we can leave more teleportational reviews on Welsp? See, if you take Wells and rhyme it with Yelp, it doesn't quite work. But we do these things anyway. Because to live is to endeavor. And to endeavor is to sometimes come up short. So realistically, it's not a good Yelp pun, but it kind of gets Wells Knight's name in there, so we're going to do it anyway. In the meantime, the reason I actually wanted to get all of these ender pearls was because I knew that I was going to have to do a ton of digging to get all of this kind of sorted out in the nether. So some of you guys are probably asking, okay, Joe, what do ender pearls have to do with pickaxes? I mean, how many pickaxes do you need to dig this out, and how many of them are ender pearls? Oh, wait, look, now I'm back on the ground. Whoops. Let's just ender pearl back up. Oh, no, I screwed that up. Okay, now we need another one. Uh, okay, that was also a bad ender pearl. And before you know it, I'll have gone through, like, all of those ender pearls in my inventory. There is just no reasonable way for me to manage this without looking, dang it, very silly, frequently, you know? And some people are like, you know, Joe, being a freak in a modern society is actually a sign of individuality. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not a freak. I'm a frequent needer of the ability to teleport. I'm like a frequent flyer, except without flying. I need to just be in one place and then in another. And, you know, some people don't necessarily see a economic need for that. You know, it's kind of one of those things where people are like, guys, planes, flying, and cars, they're good enough for now. We don't need to teleport right away. And I'm like, no, I need to teleport right away. Why? Because I fall. And why do we fall? So we can learn to teleport back up. It was in that Batman movie where he teleports a lot. Um, X-Men 2 or something. I don't remember exactly. Anyway, so we're just going to kind of keep bashing away at this ground because, you know, I found that that's one way to, you know, generally improve the volume of a space. Another way to improve the volume is to have something blow up or light up or, as my daughter says, glow up. For some reason, she thinks the word or phrase for lighting something up is glow up. She doesn't have glow-in-the-dark bracelets. If I get her glow-in-the-dark bracelets to, like, take her to a concert or to an event in the park at night or something, she's like, Daddy, you got me the glow-up bracelets. I'm like, no, people are going to think you're saying blow up, and then they're going to think that there's, like, some sort of terrorist thing. So, no, no, it's, it's glow-in-the-dark. And she's like, hey, Daddy, these bracelets glow up. And I'm like, I just told you, they don't glow up. But, and people are like, why is your daughter saying that those things blow up? I'm like, oh, no, no, it's, you know, 
a lot of being a father is just trying to not look like your kid is raised in a terrible environment. It's just like, no, I didn't strap explosives to this small person. I gave her glow in the dark bracelets that she is now misunderstanding the name of. And anyway, that is just the sort of thing like they don't tell you that when you, you know, it's like, OK, well, you know, what are the important things about about being a parent? Like, well, you got to take an interest in your child's education. You got to you got to really kind of help them out when they're feeling low about themselves. You know, nobody's like, hey, you know, make sure your kid doesn't accidentally say something that terrifies the general population, you know, because that, that why would you worry about that? It's like, well, the general population is easily terrified these days. Things have not been going well. Like it's it's a thing. You got to you got to keep the crazy things your kid says away from people's like terrifying fears. And that's a lot of work sometimes. So anyway. Yeah, that's the story of the glow up bl bracelets. Brr. Anyway, uh, okay. And just as the lark takes to the sky, look at me way up high. I've been carving my way through this cave, trying to be at least a little bit brave, or at least trying to misbehave in generally non-productive ways. And so I'm up here, and I was thinking to say like, you know, hey guys, what's up? You know, it's been. I started recording this episode a few days ago, actually, and I was having some really bad allergies, which I'm finally coming out of. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do this episode right. I'm not going to publish this with like a seven minute thing of me being like, guys, I don't feel good. Like this is you guys deserve the best episode I can make for you every time. So anyway, I did want to talk about a few things that I hadn't even done yet when I started this recording, like this recording being from last week, does not include the weekend. And one of the coolest things that I got to do this weekend was play more Hunt the Hermits with my friends and not Hunt the Hermits. Dang it. What's the name of that thing that we make? It's, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Hermit Hardcore. Hardcore Hermits. Um, basically, it's a vanilla hardcore th challenge where we have to complete a whole bunch of objectives. And it is... Uh, really goofy and really fun and I was super excited because the challenge this time which changes every time we play it uh, the first round which I didn't get to participate in the challenge was uh, try to make uh, or try to get every achievement in the game for every achievement you get you get one point or your team gets one point now when we played uh, for round two the new rule was for every block that you get in the game and put in like a special temple you get one point and if you haven't seen the first episode of that it's out now it features myself zombie cleo and python gb and you know we might not be the winningest team although we might be also the winningest team but we are definitely the banterinest team and so if you want to you know watch us hanging out and palling around we're gonna have those episodes wait what was okay i think that was cub fan flying past hi cub <laughs> anyway um it is a lot of fun just python cleo and i hanging out trying to collect every block in the game there's a time limit and also a death penalty the thing about hardcore minecraft is if you die you just uh end the game so it is us trying to get every block in the game without dying it's uh pretty fun and i think you guys will enjoy it so let's see, what else was I up to this weekend? Well, I don't know if you guys are big race fans, but this was the biggest horse racing weekend in Nashville's annual horse racing calendar. So in Kentucky, they've got something called the Kentucky Derby, you know. So obviously in Nashville, our big horse racing event is called the Steeplechase. Everybody goes out there and wears crazy clothes and big hats and stuff. I didn't wear a big hat. That's mostly actually the women that wear big hats. But I took Corinne uh, out there. Uh, Marion, my wife, actually went with some friends. And they did the whole, like, tailgating for eight hours thing, which is not a good idea for a five-year-old's first steeplechase. So Corinne and I just stopped by there for about three hours, 
because it is in the scorching, scorching summer sun, or at least late spring sun, which in Nashville, dang it, is functionally equivalent. But, uh, it's a pretty cool event. They have, like, seven different horse races over the course of, like, the whole afternoon. People just hang out and chat and visit. But, um, this year, I took Corinne for her first time, and she was pretty excited because she had like seen pictures of like what I had worn when I had gone before and stuff like that. In fact, there's even a video of me at the steeplechase on my YouTube channel um, from like four or five years ago that I recorded where I just like my brother Sean was there. The one who wrote the uh, That's Joe Hill song. He was there with me and he was just like, you should write a poem about horses right now and I'm going to record you improvis improvisationally poetry or whatever. He said it more eloquently than that but the core concept was that anyway so um me and corinne or corinne and i went to the steeplechase and she was not interested in writing improvisational poetry about horses um but let's see the structure of the event is that there's uh seven different races um throughout the afternoon and they're separated by about a 40 minute gap so everybody hangs out and talks and then there will be a race and then everybody hangs out and talks but um so i don't know if you guys are familiar with like the sort of inflatable bounce houses or bouncy castles that they have in uh for like kids parties and stuff but they had a whole bunch of those set up in like this kind of family fun zone and the thing about it was that those th uh, in order to keep stuff like that inflated you actually have to continuously pump air into them they don't just uh, fill up and then stay on. So we're uh, over there, you know, Corinne's going on the slide, the inflate, big inflatable slide. They had this Jurassic Park-inspired thing called, like, Jurassic Zone. It was like a giant inflatable dinosaur park, which I was like, wow, this is this has gotten crazy. The, these people are really putting a lot of effort into this stuff um, in ways that maybe wasn't as artisanally present when I was a small child. That's fine. That's, you know, I'm glad my daughter lives in a more advanced society than the one I grew up in. That's that's always good. Um, but anyway, they've also got uh, one of the things was this crazy like tube maze. I don't even know how to describe it. Like I'm gonna try though. So imagine like a giant worm made out of like inflatable bouncy house plastic, and except at either end of the thing is like a door that kids can go through, and it makes like a kind of weird spirally maze, right? And so the kids start on one side, and they run through, and they come out on the other side, right? So that sounds like a pretty cool cool bounce house type thing. Um, weird inflatable maze with different segments shaped like different animals. Okay, yeah, whatever. Well, let's talk now about horses. Now, I don't know how familiar you guys are, with the equine species but horses do not like loud noises and race horses are like kind of spookable just in general they're not bred for being calm they're bred for being fast so all of the uh inflatables in the family area were located just at the first jump like after whoops that's too high so the horses would start at the starting line and then they would reach the first jump, and that's right by the kids' area. So, you know, you'd think, okay, that's great. So all the kids can go watch the uh, horses jump over the first, like, bush or whatever you call that kind of a uh, hurdle thing, right? That sounds great. But you know what? Um, it turns out that because the bouncy castles and stuff are all so close to the first jump, they have to shut down the air pumps for them every single time they start a race, right? So there's seven races. So every 40 minutes, they have to shut these things all down for about five to 10 minutes. And you might think like, okay, that that's fine. You know, that I'm sure they'll tell kids like, stop going into the maze like 15 minutes before they turn the maze air pump off and the maze collapses around any children that are left in there. They do not. They do not do that. The guy walks over and sees all these parents standing near this maze and goes, are there any kids in there? And then we all go, yes. And then he flips the switch and says, well, you should probably get them out. And the thing just starts deflating. 
and all the barons are like running up to the plastic panels along like the this like weird maze worm's body and like banging on the plastic panels trying to tell the kids to get out before the whole thing deflates around them cuz like it's kind of pretty heavy plastic for like a bunch of 3 and 4 and 5 year olds to get out of and you know they all did but it's just like you guys have to do this seven times there are seven races you might want to come up with like a process right no you know what nobody does and you know arguably this is one of those things where it's like i'm just here i'm just a guy i'm just joe hills there's i can't fix everything but you know i'm looking at that and i'm like there's got to be a better way guys there's got to be a better way but you know all i could do was pay more attention in the future and make sure that my child did not enter any of those things anywhere near race time which you know i was able to do but i don't know it's uh you know, you want to see a giant, you know, pirate ship slide deflate every few minutes. Well, not every few minutes, but every 40 minutes. Go to the steeplechase in Nashville. It's a, it's a real sight. Oh, one thing that was really cool, though, is the um, parking area for general admission where Corinne and I parked is uh, available only. Um, you can't really get directly to the racetrack from there. You have to take a shuttle. And the shuttle goes on this really cool loop all the way around Percy Warner Park which is this really hilly forested park um like it's it's where people in in nashville who are like runners and stuff will train they'll do their elevation work because it's like super steep hills everywhere but it's super forested and it's beautiful and so when we were on the uh, shuttle on the way there it was like a 10 15 minute ride and corinne's just looking out the window with her big hat on and um, she just really seemed super content and that made me happy because it's like we're not even there yet and she's like I was kind of worried she'd be like daddy how long is the shuttle ride going to be but she's just sitting there smiling and quietly looking out the window and I started to say something to her and she's like daddy shh I'm looking at the forest I'm like okay that's that's fine by me okay so anyway it was good catching up with you guys about my weekend and actually being able to talk it was good to be able to talk about Hardcore Hermits, which is going to be out every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday with me, Cleo, and Python. I've been keeping that secret from you guys for a while. Been editing a lot of episodes. Can't say how many episodes, because there's spoilers maybe, if you want to know how long we live for. But there might be up to nine episodes if we live all the way to the end. But the thing is, if you want to get every block in the game, you kind of got to go to the end. You kind of got to go to the nether. You kind of got to go to dangerous places. So, anyway, until next time, y'all. This is... Oh, wait, no. Don't don't leave yet. Tell me what to do with this. Also, what should I do with all this stuff? This whole space. I need suggestions. Dang, I keep getting distracted. Anyway, until next time, y'all. This is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.